Hey, what is up guys, and welcome back to a brand new video. So, I've been playing the Battle for Azeroth beta for a while now, trying out the different systems in the game, and just enjoying the content in general. And while playing in the beta, inevitably, I've found things I like and things I don't like about it. I don't really want to talk too much on the things I'm not liking unless I see interest in that, but I wanted to talk about some of the things I'm most excited for. I have five things for you today that I'm most excited for in Battle for Azeroth. Vaguely in some kind of an order, but not too much. Anyway, don't forget to stick around after the video and leave a like if you liked it, as well as get subscribed if you're new here. Oh, also, I wanted to mention that I have an Instagram and a Twitter account I'd recommend following if you like the content I create and like to follow me outside of YouTube. You can find me on Instagram with the handle IGAeroWave, as well as on Twitter with the handle AeroWave. With that, I'll jump into it. Number 5. Coming in at number 5 is the changes coming to PvP. I'm very mixed about how I feel about the overall situation with PvP in Battle for Azeroth as it currently stands, but I do remain hopeful currently. Probably the most odd thing about the situation is the world PvP scaling. One thing that has made me largely quit Battlegrounds is that I've disliked the scaling that takes place. If you decide to play your character differently than how the class is typically expected to be played outside of the Battlegrounds, it just feels rather dissatisfying to go into them and be clamped to certain values. For instance, I have an unhealthy fixation on Critical Strike when playing in the world and in dungeons. So much so that my Critical Strike rating at its peak in Legion was up to 59%. That means it was more common for me to critically strike than it was for me to hit with a non-critical strike. While this likely hurts my actual value with my character, it's much more satisfying and enjoyable to me personally. But in Battlegrounds, no matter how low or high it was at any time, my critical strike chance would always be clamped to 30%. That's no fun, it takes away the meaning of the gear you have. The bright side to world PvP scaling is that it seems to use the system that's used in dungeons, where your numbers are not changed to be equal, but instead the values going across the game are translated into whatever relatively makes sense. Which is how a level 101 can be in a dungeon with a level 110 and can not only compete with the damage, but can actually do devastating amounts of more damage in the event of items like the epics that dropped with an item level of 840 or so. Along with this, that means that I can keep my 50 plus percent critical strike or whatever other values I've worked for this whole time. The downside to this, at least currently, is some extremely wonky scaling across different level brackets. For an example of what I mean, you can see this video from Arrow Assassin Gaming where a level 70 player is competing and winning against a level 110 player. I'll link to his video below for you to check it out. I haven't personally experienced this, so I can't say for sure whether or not this issue has been fixed, but I very much hope it is fixed before the 8.0 patch goes live. Either which way, time will tell how this will fare. Something else I wanted to briefly touch on that involves PvP and that I'm excited to see where it goes is the Duelers Guild. As it stands, this is an arena where you can go and queue for one-on-one -on -one battles versus other individual players. There's some achievements associated with the guild with a title as a reward, but currently that's all that exists for it. What's really odd is that the area where you carry out these duels is not instanced, so it can be very unclear who you're up against until the duel actually starts. And that's not even to mention rogues and druids being able to stealth. Hopefully they change this and make it so that it is instanced, or at the very least you go to a different place for the duels. Number 4. The next thing I'm excited for is not only the races of Kul Tiran and Zandalari Troll, but their druid forms as well. I love my Worgen Druid currently, but I'm going to be hard pressed to not race change to Kul Tiran when that option becomes available to me. The Wicker forms are just so very cool looking, and the Kul Tirans themselves look so much more interesting than the stock human models. Even if they are just thick humans. Earlier on there was a lot of suggestion that the Zandalari Troll Druid forms were Horde favoritism from Blizzard because they were being shown off and were already announced for the Horde, while the Kul Tirans hadn't yet been announced for the Alliance, let alone with the capability of being Druids. I was worried about this myself, but I figured time would tell as more stuff came along for the expansion, and surely enough I wasn't wrong. Kul Tirans were announced as an allied race, and alongside that their Druid forms have been data mined since then, aside from the Moonkin form. I've heard from some that there is still some minor Horde favoritism given the coolness of the Zandalari Troll Druid forms being dinosaurs and to some degree I get that, although I don't think it's true. The dinosaur druid forms look significantly cooler to me than the wicker ones, but I think that's just because I like dinosaurs more than I like gothic stylings. I know that friends of mine who enjoy more gothic styled things have very certainly thought the Kul Tirans have looked cooler. I think the two races druid forms are about equal in how cool they are, it just depends on your personal taste. While I main alliance, I play both factions, so I'll be sure to enjoy both very thoroughly. Number 3. Number 3 on my list is going to be legacy loot. In patch 7.3.5, we already lost the ability to have any loot mode besides personal. What this means is, gone are the days of loot stealing. Gone are the days of runs where the leader of the run promises a piece of loot to a member then doesn't give that item, which I guess is still kind of ninja looting, but still. Gone are the days of raid leaders being able to control loot and assign loot to individuals who either are best fit for the gear or who have earned the loot otherwise. Most importantly, Gone are the days of that party member of your group, usually a hunter who needs on every single freaking item, and wins whether the gear is an upgrade or not. No, I don't need that gear, it's not an upgrade. 
Yeah, it's Lobby gear that would easily be replaced anyway, and it isn't worth much, but damn it, that loot is intended to be divvied amongst the whole group, not just yourself. Salt and joking aside, all of that stuff is a thing of the past, but to take its place, everyone has their own personal loot now in any context, similar to modern dungeons and LFR. I've heard a lot of people upset about this, and frankly I'm not personally quite sure what there is to gain from this in the eyes of Blizzard. But what I do know is that this has caused some concern in the World of Warcraft community over how loot will work in older content, such as old raids and old dungeons. They have addressed this with what I mentioned before, Legacy Loot Mode. What this does, as detailed in a blue post, is the following. The number of items dropped by bosses will be the same as it would have been if you were in a full party. So if you're in a 5 player dungeon, you'll get 5 players worth of loot. For raids with a flexible raid size, such as Raid Finder, this will act as though there were 20 players in the raid. All items on the loot table will have a chance to drop, not just the ones that are designated for your spec. If you have multiple players in the group, the loot will be split amongst these players, but be tradable. For example, if you're clearing with one other player and kill a boss that should drop 4 items, you'll each be able to pick up 2 items and trade them between each other if you like. From what I've seen online, this has great potential for transmog loot runs. More loot means more chances at rarer items, which is always great. Though, I'm wary about how mount drops are going to be affected. I couldn't find anything online about it, so we'll have to wait and see how that is handled, but hopefully mount drops stay the same or get better. Surely you wouldn't have a 1% drop chance for Invincible's reigns for 25 players equating to basically a 25% chance to have at least one. Number 2. The second to last thing I'm excited for is the item level slash stat squish. From what it seems, this doesn't have a functional effect on the gameplay, more so just a visual one, but I'm excited to see the small numbers again. The most important reason why this is actually good as opposed to just enjoyable is the fact that it's much more readable. If you see a pop-up of damage on your screen for 2,493,296 damage, then another one for 1,220,116, what good does that do for you? Could you even recite the numbers I just said from memory without rewinding? I figure not, but what if you saw 486 damage, then 882? Those are much more digestible numbers than millions, and will be significantly more useful to work with. To me personally, the visual side of things is much more exciting because I like individual points of damage meaning something. I'm the kind of person that really enjoys playing older JRPGs where you may start off with something that does, say, 8 to 15 damage, then later at late game you could do as much as 4 to 500 damage. I'm also the kind of person that if I download other role-playing games to try and the first time I do damage it's in the thousands, I immediately uninstall the game, no questions asked. But that's just me. Number 1. Of all the systems and features I've experienced with Battle for Azeroth, a lot have been very satisfying and enjoyable. Some have left me concerned and worried. But the one that impressed me more than I possibly could have expected is something that has never impressed me with any expansion as much as this one is shaping up to do. In Battle for Azeroth, one of the most exciting features to enjoy is the world interactivity, or I guess you could more easily call this as being excited for the dungeons. I'm excited for how well the world content as well as its stories interact with your character compared to other expansions, but where it really shines is the dungeons. As opposed to dungeons from prior expansions, the dungeons in Battle for Azeroth have a real identity to them, a real sense of character. In Legion, were any of the dungeons memorable, save from Return to Karazhan or Court of the Stars? Not really. At this point, I must warn, if it matters to you, spoilers are ahead. To skip the spoilers, skip to the timestamp on screen now. In Toldagor, we see ourselves rushing a beach, fighting some dangerous wildlife to reach the sewers of a prison. Toldagor. The crabs and vice jaws as they were, really finned crocolisks, are ready to defend the territory they feel is theirs from the invading party. After dealing with that and getting past enough of the wildlife, you have to fight a boss before entering the sewers. This boss is a very large crolusk. Story-wise, the difficulty of the fight is driven to the extent that Talia says that this boss must be why the Overseer doesn't have any guards on this side of the island. Finishing that boss, you move into the sewers which has more bugs and crocolisks in it that you must deal with. After you move in, you find varying enemies to attack who are defending the prison. And unlike most enemies you face in the game at this point, the enemies here actually do what sentient beings might do when their life is threatened. They run away trying to recruit allies to help fight the players. It's such a real feeling experience. On a plus side, you also get to see an Asbon Gold. After dealing with more enemies, you find even more Asmon Golds. On the way to the second boss, there's various prison cells with Iron Tide Associates in them. After you do a certain amount of damage to just Hallis, that's the second boss, he stuns the players and runs off, releasing the prisoners to fight with him. It ends up not being a terribly difficult fight, but at first it was intimidating and it was a very exciting event to see in a dungeon. I won't go into as much detail about the rest of the dungeon or any of the other dungeons, but I just love how that dungeon felt significantly better than other dungeons from the past. With Shrine of the Storm, you have an exciting encounter with cultists leading up to killing Lord Stormsong as well as a faceless one as the final boss of the dungeon. With Freehold, you're storming a fort which also has very interesting and more real feeling interactions and experiences. This including a fun little encounter where you have to catch a pig, kill a tortolan, and finally kill an ogre with freaking sharks on his arms. Waycrest Manor was thematically extremely interesting and very dark, but has a huge downside of being fairly confusing. 
For that reason, I suspect this will be a dungeon most players will prefer avoiding after doing it for whatever quest they have to do it for. Which is unfortunate given the dungeon has a very dark and gritty gothic theme to it, as well as some interesting boss fights. To complement all these dungeons and their themes, the dungeons feel fairly difficult again, especially with the tanks being required to focus aggro a little bit harder. As with any expansion, I imagine the difficulty of the dungeons will die down pretty rapidly as players start to get geared, but it should be very fun, at least for a while, solely on the difficulty basis, and I'm sure Heroic and Mythic Plus will be great this expansion too. Anyway, that's all I have for today. Those are the five things I'm most excited for with Battle for Azeroth. The 8.0 pre-patch is coming out Tuesday, July 17th, so I'm excited to see some of those changes go in on that day actually. The item level squish, war mode, and world PvP scaling, as well as the legacy loot mode should all be coming out with it. What do you all think are the most exciting things coming with Battle for Azeroth? And are you excited for the things I mentioned today? Let me know in the comments below, I'm always very happy to read your comments. Anyway, don't forget to check out my Instagram, that's IG Arrowwave, and my Twitter, at Arrowwave, both linked below. And be sure to leave a like if you liked the video, and get subscribed if you're new here. That all being said, thank you very much for watching, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.